Capcom has been on a rather interesting journey. Ever since Resident Evil 7, they managed to regain the trust of the fans and the gamers. They continued the momentum of the entire thing through Devil May Cry 5 and the Resident Evil 2 remake. Even the Resident Evil 3 remake, while not as good as the second one, still has its charms. And Jill's new design still has loads of appreciators and enthusiasts fuming in their reproductive hormones and seeking to put her in compromising situations, if you catch my formal vernaculars. And Village continues the tradition of wanting to see mature women in hormone-inducing situations with Resident Evil Village, except the woman in this case is a 9 foot tall vampire whose age make the rest of the female Resident Evil cast look like kindergartens in comparison. It's kind of insane how the hype for this game is less on its horror aspects or its continuation towards the seventh game and more about how people really want to get chased by an immensely sized woman with disproportionately thick rears, unbelievably glutinous fronts, and her desire to set her really sharp gloves to go straight to your body after you mess up her day. So Resident Evil 8 has a lot of hype in terms of the uh arousal factor? I have a feeling that Capcom is gonna continue this trend for the next game because people reacted so positively to the big vampire mama. Resident Evil already has its shares of hot women, so all it needs to bank on this notion is a beach volleyball game. I might be by that just for the lulls. But if I'm being honest, I bought the game because I was genuinely intrigued by its direction, and I do want to see where it's going, especially with the tease of Chris turning evil in the trailer. That got me hooked. So can Resident Evil Village delivers? Well, it's a better werewolf game than The Order 1986. I can tell you that. It's been three years after the events of Resident Evil 7, or at least the canon ending of Resident Evil 7, Ethan and Mia are living peacefully in a remote town somewhere in Europe to get away from all of those pesky bioterrorism trouble that always hunts this universe, a lot more so than, oh, I don't know, actual terrorism. Ethan and Mia have an argument about confronting and talking about what happened three years ago, which is apparently a discussion that never happened in the past and they still haven't moved on from it, but at least they have an adorable little daughter to look forward to. Things were a bit rocky between the two, but it seems to be mostly alright. That is, until Chris Redfield and his brand new special squad team storm into the house and shot Mia dead. What? What's going on here? Why did Chris suddenly turn into the dark side? What has caused Chris to turn against the very people that he sought to protect? Why did Chris abduct Ethan's baby girl? Is it because Leon never returned any of your please bang my sister calls? Ethan is asking the same thing, but he got knocked out before he can ponder some answers. Eventually, he woke up in the middle of the night in a snowy weather in a village of some sort, a place that just so happened to be quite relevant in terms of the overall plot of the game. So will Ethan Winters find some answers in what the hell is going on? What kind of dark secrets will Ethan find in this village? Why is Chris suddenly interested in his family once more? Where am I gonna get chased by the big vampire mama? Before we talk about the content of the game, I want to talk about the PC port. Can I just commend the team at Capcom for being really damn great with our PC ports lately? The newer RE Engine Resident Evil games are actually well known for being really light in terms of system specs. Even old low to mid-range hardware can run their recent games rather comfortably, as long as your expectations are set up correctly. You're not gonna run this on an Intel graphics, or at least the older ones. Maybe in the future we're gonna see Intel graphics running these games like Bliss. The graphical settings of the game are pretty diverse as well. You have so many options you can tweak and the game will show you how much VRAM you consume with these settings and how much impact they will have towards the performance in general. There's an ultra widescreen option which is totally appreciated as Resident Evil 7 doesn't have one and I'm recording this at ultra widescreen which is why you're seeing this video in ultra wide rather than the typical aspect ratio. The one thing that's missing is an FOV slider, which Resident Evil 7 does have, but you have to use a mod for this one, or at least for this version at the time of this video. But aside from that, Capcom did an excellent job in terms of the game engine and the PC port in general. That being said, I do have some issues with it, in that every single time an enemy is dead, the game momentarily freezes. I don't know what's that all about, and it happens so much to the point where it's genuinely noticeable, and despite running the game on an NVMe SSD and a laptop that's pretty high-end by a lot of people's standards, there are some assets in the game game, especially in really intense scenes, that are rendered in such a way that they look like stop motion videos. None of these are absolute deal breakers though, they're just tiny little imperfections in an otherwise perfectly satisfactory meal. And boy, it is one satisfying meal. Resident Evil always nails it in terms of setting and visuals and atmosphere. Even their worst game have some charm to it. Village did an excellent job in bringing all of those visual aesthetics. I didn't turn on ray tracing, even though I can, I just think it's pointless in general and it hogs more performance than needed. 
completed, but even without ray tracing, this is a gorgeous looking game. Now the village area in a snowy mountain from morning to evening isn't that particularly scary, because it's so freaking bright it almost gives a rather calming vibe, but you won't feel so calm for long the moment you see all of the werewolves and the destruction being caused by them. You won't feel calm for long when you're running out of ammo and you're surrounded by these creatures piling up to maul you senselessly. It really gives the same vibe as Resident Evil 4 did, while you are in a totally bright location, you're alone and helpless most of the time, and you're gonna get hounded by nasty villagers and cultists. I, I mean, werewolves. In fact, this game took a lot of cues from Resident Evil 4, to the point where it can totally pass off as a remake of Resident Evil 4. The village areas, the castle areas, the industrial areas, the lake with the giant fish, these are all locations that were in Resident Evil 4. That's not to say that the typical villages wouldn't have these areas, but it does make it seem like we're retreading past steps in a different location. Mm, actually not exactly different too, as the game does take place somewhere in Europe, just like Resident Evil 4, and interestingly you can also hunt around chickens and fishes and doing so will actually give you upgrades. The atmosphere is also helped with the game's absolutely top notch and excellent sound design. The game can get quiet a bit, putting you in a false sense of comfort, and then suddenly rattling noises come around the area, and you don't really know what it is, but you're afraid that it might jump on you at any moment, and you're just gonna get more and more tense as you get along. It's those really quiet moments that can sometimes be rather startling too. One thing you're looking around for collectibles, you kill the enemies left and right, and then BAM! Some big monster appears to ruin your day. It's great, and New Resident Evil has never failed to impress me in this department. Now let's talk about the gameplay, and let me tell you, this is the finest that Resident Evil gameplay has to offer. Village is basically taking the gameplay of Resident Evil 7, but expanding it even further. You still have the first person shooting combat from Resident Evil 7, which feels really good to play in, but you also have Resident Evil 4's inventory system, the mysterious merchant, and the weapon upgrades that really expand the game's combat mechanics and versatility. The game also has collectibles and hidden treasures you can find around the area that you can sell into the merchant for more customizations and more expandability for your character's arsenal. The combat overall is really freaking fun. Now it's a lot more action oriented than Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 is a lot of cat and mouse with the residents which can be scary but there's not a lot of replay value in it in my opinion. Village however has loads of low tier enemies in the form of lichens that make the combat more important. Now the atmosphere of being alone in a spooky forest is great and all but being hounded by loads of enemies left and right and not knowing what to do next especially when you're running out of ammo can also be rather terrifying too. You don't know when enemies are gonna pop up and how the enemies are going to pop up and you don't have a lot of ammo to take them down so you just run your ass off into the next building hoping for them to finally go away. The gameplay and the combat overall are excellent but there's one major flaw in it in my opinion. I was rather disappointed with the boss fights as I feel like they're too easy. Every boss fight is always handicapped in some ways by the plot and even always have a ridiculous plot armor to protect him from all sorts of harm. And no I'm not talking about the plot where they actually explain why Ethan can handle so much pain. I'm talking about those moments where the monsters just chose to throw him away instead of crushing him into tiny little pieces. It happens so many times throughout the story. The actual boss fights themselves are also handicapped by the gameplay. Don't know why any of the daughters can't just swarm even with bees and sting him to death. They just chose to wander around the area waiting for even to come close to them. When the actual boss fight with them comes in, they got hurt by cold air and somehow they chose to continue fighting in cold air. So the game handicaps them by making them doofuses as well. As the game goes on, they feel more like a nuisance rather than a threat. Heck, Alcina Dimitrescu too can feel more like a nuisance rather than a threat, especially when I'm trying to find a treasure in a particular area, and there she is, storming the day with her chunky chunky buttery. So the game didn't really startle me in the evil vampire castle area, which feels like it should have been the very last area in the game, and yet somehow it's the very first few areas. I feel like the place is way too cluttered with such royal and expensive furnishings that it puts me in a sense of comfort rather than dread, and this happens for most of the boss's sections with the exception of one, and that is the goddamn creepy dollhouse. Her section is genuinely some of the best that Resident Evil has to offer. It's creepy, it's unsettling, it keeps you in your toes all the time. Granted, it's nothing new, but it's so goddamn effective in keeping me tense. I'm so scared, I had to spend most of my time looking down the floor, as I don't want to get startled by some stupid jump scares. There's not a lot of jump scares in this game, thankfully, but there is one that actually got me. Unfortunately, I didn't record my voice at the time, so I'm gonna do my best to recreate my reaction. Oh my fucking god, you fucking stupid ass bitches. Oh 
Fuck, man. Come to think of it, the game overall is way too easy under standard difficulty. I recommend the veterans of both action games and Resident Evil in general to crank up that difficulty to hard at least, because this supposedly terrifying horror game becomes a walk in a park for me. The game is really generous with ammunitions to the point where crafting for them is redundant, except for pistol ammo. I always run out of pistol ammo, so most of my ammo crafting and ammo purchases are resorted there. I will still have plenty of shotgun slugs and snapper ammo left that I always save for the bosses or any of the tougher enemies. At least the game's aiming is much better. But there is one thing that I didn't expect to love from Resident Evil Village, and that is the exploration. This is the most fun that I've had exploring in a Resident Evil game, or video games in general. I have so much fun going from one area to another and backtracking with the new tools that I have to unlock new places and areas and find more treasures to sell. I always love opening up the map and realizing that the area is still red, which means that there are items or treasures I haven't gotten yet, and once I got them, the area is all blue and it feels genuinely satisfying. But here comes a problem that might be a deal breaker for some of you. This game is pretty short. While I didn't get all of the treasures and the upgrades and the collectibles and all of that, I did manage to get most of them, and even then, I'll still clock at nearly 8 hours. That said, I did reload some saves to regain the treasures that I sold, and I did redo some areas as well, so if you include all of that, it took me about 10 and a half hours. Now, yes. Resident Evil games are always pretty short, they're the length of your typical single player campaign, but they are designed to be that way, and the value that you gain from Resident Evil is the fact that the campaign is replayable to the point where you can unlock new gadgets and tools for your arsenal, play in higher difficulties, etc. This is an area that Village improves so much from Resident Evil 7. The fact that you have more low tier enemies to take down to compared to Resident Evil 7 means that your weapons are actually useful this time, and the game's brand new merchant gives you a lot of options and versatility for the kind of arsenal you want to bring for them. There's also a mercenaries mode if you're into that sort of thing that will also unlock bonuses for the single player campaign. So yeah, this game is short, but it's intended to be replayed over and over again. If you're not into that, then maybe don't spend $60 on this game and wait for it to go on sale. Regardless, the gameplay of Village is freaking excellent. It's some of the best that Resident Evil has to offer. It's the exploration and the collectibles and the replay value that really puts it at the top of other Resident Evil games in my opinion. Opinion, and I've played almost all of them. Now let's get into the story. The story of the Resident Evil games are not the greatest. In fact, some of them can be pretty terrible. Despite their characters being really iconic and having lots of fans, the actual story that they're involved in is really nothing special. That being said, I actually really enjoyed the Ethan Winter saga. In fact, Ethan's saga has the exact opposite problem that Sirius has. His character is not that memorable. He's pretty generic actually, so generic that the game doesn't want to show his face. I mean, this this is his action figure. Like, what's so special about this dude that you have to cover him up like that? It's not a freaking wanted criminal. But that being said, the story that surrounds him and the mystery and the reveals are genuinely intriguing, or at least to me it is. I want to know what's going on with the Bakers to the point where they become insane like that. I want to know what's going on with Chris to the point where he has to pull off a seemingly villainous turn at the beginning. Resident Evil story is great when it's simple and focus on people who are not special agents or military personnel, which unfortunately doesn't happen a lot because they love to recycle previous games characters, and even so, they always portray military personnel as totally incompetent and they're basically the game's punching bag. Even Saga actually subverts this for the most part. You are always in the shoes of your common everyday man, to the point where you are praying for the military to come in, no matter how incompetent they are. At least they have more firepower to deal with these freaks than you are. It's that simple change of perspective that makes them feel like actual badasses, and we do get to feel it near the end of the game, where you just mow down the these werewolves like it's nothing, which really puts things in perspective and how completely out of our league we are in the grand scheme of things. Village still manages to retain the Ethan Saga story quality, and that the characters are rather bland, predictable, and really underdeveloped even with the reading of all the in-game text, but the mystery and its reveals are genuinely intriguing, it makes me want to know what happens next, and it gives me enough motivation to continue playing until the end just so that I know the mysteries. I did sort of manage to guess who Lady Miranda is, but the reveals at the end does manage to at least maybe go, huh. 
That's actually kind of interesting. There are a couple of issues with the story that I have. As I said before, Aphid basically holds a really amazing plot armor and such stunning amount of luck that just prevents him from getting killed. There's one part where he literally got one of his actually necessary body parts to get chopped off, but he puts that chopped off body part together and somehow it works okay. It's as if his body is a freaking gun plot. You can just attach and detach and nothing bad would happen to it. The story sort of explains why Ethan can recover from serious injuries and his body getting chopped off many times, but it's rather wishy-washy about it. So in summary, I did not expect to enjoy Resident Evil Village as much as I did, but Capcom has legitimately impressed me with this game. It's not my favorite Resident Evil, but it's definitely somewhere on the top. It's genuinely the most fun that I've had with a Resident Evil game in years. The setting is beautiful, creepy, disgusting, and terrifying, but it's also really fun to explore around and hunt all the secrets and collectibles. The gameplay is some of the best that the series has to offer in recent years. It expands the combat of Resident Evil 7 with more versatility, more freedom, more upgrades, and more replay value. I was also shockingly intrigued by the story. I love the mystery, I love the reveals, it kept me on the edge of my seat long enough for me to want to know what happens next. I cannot wait to see the future of the series as I am seeing so much windows open for the series to grow and expand to territories that the previous games haven't explored yet. And while a lot of villages elements feel more like a retread into the past Resident Evil games, at least they're retreading into the actually good Resident Evil Resident Evil games, rather than the garbage ones. Do I recommend Resident Evil Village? Well, if you don't like a game that clocks on 8 hours and relies on replay value for the content, then get this game on sale. If you want a decent action horror game, this is definitely the game for you. If you want a good Resident Evil game with great replay value, this is definitely the game for you. I bought this game at full price and I'm gonna replay the game again, totally freaking worth it. And that's all for the video today, if you like this video, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support me through the many links down below and thanks for watching.